It is Monday, September 11th. Today, the tug of war between where consumers say they want to see you and where you actually are. Google's new appeals process comes with a ticking time limit. Meta goes cross-platform, but not voluntarily. And it's the case of X's disappearing ad disclosures. I'm Todd Maffin. That's ahead. Today in Digital Marketing. So you've had your quarterly planning meeting, you know where you're going to run your ads, but are they where your targets want to see your ads? There's often a disconnect between where people say they want to be reached and where we marketers try to reach them. Take YouTube ads as an example. Ask consumers which ad formats they love, and YouTube ads are not going to be at the top of that list, mostly because they're interruptive. They get in the way. Which, of course, is precisely why we filthy digital marketers choose YouTube ads. And new numbers out this week from Kantar's latest Media Reactions report solidifies this. For the second year in a row, consumers said Amazon was their favorite place to see ads because they found the ads to be relevant and useful. But for marketers, Amazon ads didn't even show up in the top five. Our number one? YouTube which got a 6% increase in trust among media buyers compared to last year. In case you're curious, here are the top five. For consumers, Amazon, Google, TikTok, Instagram, and Spotify, in that order. And for marketers, YouTube, Google, Instagram, TikTok, and Spotify. Quoting Marketing Brew, When it comes to media channels, consumers showed an affinity for ads that reach them via in-person experiences like events or going to the movies a.k.a. channels that cause the least interruption to their lives, according to Kantar. Marketers leaned toward newer channels. Consumers ranked sponsored events as their most preferred channel, followed by cinema ads, out-of-home campaigns, point-of-sale assets, and digital out-of-home. Marketers, meanwhile, put online video in their number one spot, followed by sponsored events, digital out-of-home, video streaming ads, and online stories, unquote. As for television, it didn't crack the top five for either group, a notable change from last year, where marketers placed it firmly as their number three pick. This year, television is down to 12th place, with only 6% of marketers saying they're planning to increase spending in those spaces. Also down, the X formerly known as Twitter, 14% of marketers say they plan to reduce spend there next year. The Kantar study polled 16,000 consumers and 900 senior marketers. Heads up, if you manage your brand's Google business profile, the company will soon be implementing a new workflow for getting a banned profile reinstated, and it comes with a time limit. The old process was convoluted and haphazard. You'd get a form from a support rep, ask them to review... You'd sometimes get a generic reason for dismissing your appeal. You could ask them to look again, and sometimes even have it escalated a third time. The new process is currently active in Europe. It's a kind of step-by-step wizard, which should provide more information about why your account was shut off. But reports say when it asks you for documents to prove your case, you've only got 60 minutes from that point to upload them. Quoting Ben Fisher from SteadyDemand.com, quote, You have one chance to apply for reinstatement. If you miss this step, you will most likely be denied and have no chance at an appeal, unquote. Back in the day, in the early 2000s, the first app I'd install on any new computer was Trillion. Trillion was an instant messaging app, but it didn't have its own service. Rather, it pulled in chats from all the popular services of the day. ICQ, MSN Messenger, Yahoo Messenger, and a handful of others. It meant you could chat with your friends on multiple networks without needing to have multiple chat clients open. There is a sort of similar app out there now, one that VCs and other tech reporters recommend, but it's one of those monthly subscription apps. It's not cheap, and when I tried it, it got my WhatsApp account banned. I appealed to Meta saying I barely even use my WhatsApp account, and some auto-enforcement bot denied my appeal, and now, since your WhatsApp account is tied to your phone number, I guess I'm banned from WhatsApp for the rest of my life or as long as I'll have my phone number. Luckily, though, it sounds like European regulators will do what the big platforms refuse to do, provide real cross-platform messaging. Techies have noticed that there's now code in the Android beta version of WhatsApp for a new section called 
third-party chats. Quoting TechCrunch, quote, In 2022, the EU said that interoperability for messaging platforms was a key requirement for messaging services from gatekeepers. In other words, people who use Signal, Telegram, or Snapchat will be able to send messages to WhatsApp and Messenger users without having to create a WhatsApp or Messenger account. Gatekeepers have six months to comply with the full set of obligations, meaning that interoperability should be live in March of 2024, unquote. There is one notable messenger not on that list, Apple's iMessage. The reason? EU's regulations only kick in when there are more than 45 million users of the service. Apple claims it doesn't have that many. When it comes to hiring, don't wait for great talent to find you. Find them first with Indeed. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. With Instant Match, more than 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job, according to Indeed data in the U.S., in fact, we found Steph, our associate producer, using Indeed. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash digital. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash digital. Just go to Indeed.com slash digital and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. Indeed.com slash digital. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. At first glance, it might seem just like a simple digital whiteboard, but Miro's capabilities run far beyond that. It's a visual collaboration tool where the whole team can build on each other's ideas and create something innovative together from anywhere. Shorten time to launch so your customers can get what they need faster. With Miro, you only need one tool to see your vision come to life. Planning, researching, brainstorming, designing, feedback cycles, it can happen across teams in Miro. So you can hop into a board, check progress, leave feedback, or even contribute at any time. Speeding up input means speeding up outcomes. Cut out any confusion on who needs to do what by mapping out processes, roles, and timelines. You can do that with several templates, including Miro's swim lane diagram. Your first three Miro boards are free forever when you sign up. Sign up today at Miro.com slash podcast. That's M-I-R-O dot com slash podcast. It's not difficult to see why advertisers are abandoning X. From Elon Musk's recent fights with Jewish advocacy groups to the reinstatement of accounts most marketers would consider not brand safe. Now, X is being accused of hiding ad disclosures. You might recall a couple of months ago we reported that X had changed the way it indicated a post was a paid ad, with the word ad in light gray text in the top right of a post. Honestly, I had to look for about five seconds at the new design before I even saw it. But last week, people noticed even that disclosure was gone. There was literally nothing visible disclosing that a post had been paid for. The only way you'd know is if you click the More Details button and you'd see those Why Am I Seeing This Ad options. Also not clear if this was a test of a forthcoming design or a glitch or a deliberate attempt to deceive consumers, or just a way to rile people up and generate engagement on the platform. Some tech policy analysts suggested that the American trade regulator should step in, that the practice was an obvious violation of the FTC's rules. Many media organizations tried to get clarification on the change, but X no longer replies to media inquiries. Yeah, you know we all up in a club, no we shut it down, and me a couple man looking for that browning. I look, I know how it looks. <laughs> I know how it looks. Wednesday and Thursday, I was telling you in this extra about how much I was so excited that Starfield had come out um, from my favorite game publisher and how I was playing the hell out of it. And then Friday, suddenly there's no newsletter and there's no podcast. <laughs> look, I know how it looks. Okay, I did not play hooky. We actually had a pretty big technical glitch that rendered my computer uh, basically a brick for a while. We're, we're switching cloud providers. We used to use sync.com, um, but we're, well, variety of reasons for leaving them and uh, and just moving to a different provider. But trying to get our one and a half terabytes of data off of the cloud when the hard drive of my computer is only one terabyte, and honestly, like three quarters of it is full anyway. It never, 
occurred to me how logistically you would do that. Here's how Sync seems to do it is you have to go back and forth with them with support for a couple of weeks it took, basically. And then um, they just essentially turn on the tap and all your data tries to to, uh, land on your computer and some of it does. And then your computer completely fills up and stops working and just crashes. It was a nightmare. Um, now you would think, you would think, but Todd, didn't you just, didn't you just buy your computer recently? You must have your old computer. And, and I did have my old computer until I sold it at a garage sale, <laughs> not two weeks ago. We had a whole bunch of Mac laptops, you know, hand me downs basically. And I, I got rid of them. So the computer crashed. It took me the better part of Friday to even get it back up and running. I was not playing hooky. I promise. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs>